How many can think about a time in their life where suddenly at night the lights went out, the electricity went out? Isn't that kind of a... We're, we're so used to having, um, you know, these little devices all over our house, right, that give off this little light. And so it's, it's never really dark. But when the electricity goes out, it's like, wow, you really know how eerie dark it can be, right? That's incredible. And sometimes you sit there and go like, this is strange. Because there's no light. I want to take you to a hillside thousands of years ago. All there was was the darkness and maybe a few stars, maybe some moonlight, maybe. But these shepherds were on the side of a hill and they were working. And all of a sudden, in the middle of that field came this incredible, blinding Light. I want to take you to the story of Luke chapter 2. In the vicinity were the shepherds. They were living under the open sky, watching in their shifts, taking their turns over the flock. And behold, an angel of the Lord came. Bam! The lights all bright, the entire sky and that field. The glory of the Lord flashed, shone all around them, and guess what happened? Yeah. They were scared spitless. <laughs> and you know what? Oh, we would have been, right? I mean, let's, not, let's be honest. We're not that, that good that if we were there in darkness and bam, that we wouldn't be like, oh man, what's going on? So what did the angel say? Well, the angel had to say something to help the situation, so he said, fear not, right? Fear not, because he had to get control. Why? Why is it so important to say fear not? Here's why, because if you let fear grab a hold of your life, it will ruin the revelation. Fear in your life will hold back that which God wants to do. Fear in your life will prevent the word from coming alive. Fear will prevent God's word from getting to you or for you being obedient to it if you're wrapped up in fear or living in fear. The angel had to say, fear not. Calm down. I got this. Let me tell you why I'm here. And then he went on to reveal, I bring you tidings of great joy to all people. For you is born this day in the town of David, right? Who is Christ, the Lord. Fear not. Even though you're afraid, fear not. Because I want to tell you something. One of the things I've discovered in my life and many others' life is we can live in this place of the what ifs. Anybody ever been there? What if something's happening in your life? something not good, and all of a sudden you play this thing in your head, the what ifs, well, what if this happens, and what if that happens, and what if this person says that, and what if this person does that, and what if the medical report comes back this way, or what if my, my child does this, and what if, what if, what if, what if, what if can paralyze us? It can cause us down the road of fear. The what ifs that so many people play, the what ifs that are in so many people's heads, and we live our life by it, and we know so many people can be paralyzed and anxiousness. What if the microphone is broke? And then there's the what is. The what ifs haven't happened. The what ifs may never happen. But the what is is right in front of us. The what is is there. The what is is you're living in it. And sometimes the what is can be scary. And sometimes the what is can be fearful. And sometimes the what is can be so uncertain. The what is can cause fear. The what ifs and the what is. I want us to take a moment and we'll invite Kelly. I invited her this week as I was putting this together. I'm like, who in our world, who in our lives have been living in a place of what if and what is? And, and Kelly Herbster, if you know Kelly, um, she's there. She's been there. She's living it. If you don't know Kelly, you'll discover from her life kind of uh, what it means to live in the what ifs and the what is and what God is doing in the middle of that. So give her a moment. Thanks, everyone. Um, 
I'm going to try to hold it together. I didn't hold it together very well in the first service because um, getting up here and talking about what I've gone through and what I'm still going through, so here I go again, um, is really, really hard. Um, I never thought for a million years that I'd be up here talking about something like this. Um, usually I would want to talk about something more encouraging or helpful or, you know, something that really points to Jesus, although this will get around and it does point to Jesus, but I have been in the thick of it, the what ifs and the what is um, for seven and a half years since 2015. Um, I am not going to talk about all I've been diagnosed with and the symptoms that I have and all the meds I take and all the doctor's appointments because just all that right there speaks for itself, and it's just been um, really hard, really difficult, um, actually more than difficult at times. Um, at one point in my life, um, one of my doctors released me and said that they had done everything they can for me and that I should probably go home and get my business in order. So I went home that day, not even knowing like what was going on, not even knowing what to do, except get my affairs in order. Um, and this opened the what if questions. Um, what if I never get better? Will I be like this and feel like this the rest of my life? What if I don't see my healing on the other side of the heaven? Or on the other side of heaven. But my biggest what if is what if I die? And I know that in my heart, like, I know where I'm going. I know I'm going to heaven, but still those questions and still walking through that is really hard. Um, these questions left me very unsettled. They destroyed my peace. They left me feeling insecure, lonely, unloved. And they have shaken my faith to the very core. I never expected that I would go through this and still be going through this, but here I am. I'm still going through that today. And I wish that I could stand up here and tell you that I've handled it with great grace and just with awesomeness and walk through this with, you know, peaches and cream and like smelling of roses. But the truth of the matter is it's been pretty ugly at times, probably more ugly than um, yeah, nice looking. And it's not just the physical aspects, aspects I can't even talk. The physical part of this, I'll say that. But the emotional and the spiritual part of it has just been almost destroying. And I say almost um, because it hasn't destroyed me yet. Um, but to be honest, in the midst of this, God seems sometimes very far away. Um, he seems like at times he's not even there. And again, I know this not to be true, but in my pain, it's just really hard sometimes to even get past that. I've had days where all I want to do is crawl in bed and stay there. And, and I do do that sometimes. Um, and in those times, I, you know, I'm just laying there and all I can do is maybe just lift my hand up just a little bit. And I know that God says, if you can, you know, I'll take a hold of your right hand. Sometimes all I could do is just get my little pinky up. Um, but I know that he's still there. I've wanted to give up. Many, many times I've wanted to give up. Um, there'll be times I didn't even want to come to church because... It's just hard to get up and hard to make yourself there. And again, I think sometimes that was more of the emotional and the, the spiritual side of it. Um, just about a month ago, I had to force myself to come to church and be thankful that I didn't come in my pajamas. But <laughs> I, I got myself up. I got here, um, and I stood in the back, and all I wanted to do was just lay back there on one of the couches and just curl up and, and put a blanket on me and just stay there. And... I felt guilty for kind of being in that place. And then somebody reminded me that my worship was just getting to church that day. So I, I made it. I got there. There would be times where I, I thought, you know, again, what if I die? But I also thought, if I wasn't even on this earth right now, if God would just take me, then I wouldn't have all this pain. And, and it would be better because I'd be in heaven. And I, but I know that's not what he wants right now. Um, but the thoughts were still there. Um, how can one keep living with all the uncertainty that I've been dealing with? Um, the disappointment, the devastation, and the despair that I have at times can really be debilitating. And it's kind of like being on a roller coaster. Um, I would start to feel like God was listening, and then I would get a bad lab report back. 
and then in there would creep despair. Or I'd have one semi-good week and be down for two. And really, when I'm down, I'm down. Like, I, I really am in bed. I can't do anything. And then disappointment creeps in because I'm missing out on things in my life that you know, I want to be doing. I, I knew that I was supposed to join the prayer team here. And thoughts came in, how can I be on the prayer team when I'm not even healed? So um, guess what? I, I, I am on the prayer team now. I just joined it because I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do it and walk in it. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Um, I know that there's no promise that I'll be free from trouble in this world. In fact, God, God pretty much says so. He says, in this world you'll have trouble, but be of good cheer. Well, let me tell you, being of good cheer is really hard sometimes, um, and I have to transform my thoughts. I have to transform the way I think, but I haven't always been the cheeriest. So here's some of the things that I think when I'm not the cheeriest. Um, how did this happen? Why did this happen? Is God hearing my prayers? Is he even listening? Is he hearing the prayers of those people around me that have been praying and praying for seven and a half years for me? Why is this happening again? Um, and then I would feel guilty for thinking them. Um, I've yelled at God. I've kind of told God off. Um, Sorry, you may be shocked at that, but I, I've also come to the conclusion, it's not a conclusion, it's truth. If God can't handle me at my worst, I don't think he's God. So um, God can handle, he can handle everything that I bring before him. And you're probably thinking right now that this is kind of depressing and kind of yucky, but um, just hang in with, with me just for a little bit. Um, the reality is I don't know what the future is. I don't know what holds for me. And I didn't talk about this in the first service, but even just two weeks ago, I had some lab, had some lab work come back, and now I have to go see a hematology oncology doctor. And I was pretty devastated again. Because of course my thoughts are, you know, what if I have cancer? What if I have this blood disease? What if I have this? What is this? Um, why is this happening again? Uh, and I think I'm past that devastation, and I'm, I'm just praying right now, and I'm declaring that that was a fluke, that the blood work came back, I don't know, weird, and that I'm going to go, and I'm going to blow the doctor out of the, world, the water, and it's gonna, I'm going to be healed. It's just not going to be there. And again, I don't know what my future holds, but I can tell you that I cling to the one who does. And I'm confident that he won't abandon me. And I know without a doubt that he still works miracles. And I'm going to keep praying for one. And that's what I do know. <laughs> and I have to tell you that I'm armed. I'm armed to face the what ifs or the what is of life. And I'm armed for these reasons. First and foremost, I have Jesus. He died for me and he loves me. So whether I'm healed here or in heaven, he made all that possible. And he brings that peace around for me. Um, sometimes walking in peace during all this is really hard. But instead of focusing on what I don't know, I just focus on what I do know and what his word says. And then I know that Jesus' peace will be with me. And those storms can come, but I'll still have that peace. And the second thing that I'm armed with is people. And for real, if you're going through something, find your people. Um, find people who really, really love you. Find people who uh, will tell you the truth in love. I've had to have some hard truths spoken into me. Um, people who have, it's like, Kelly, what are you thinking here? <laughs> How are we going to get through this? Let's, let's work through this together. Um, and besides my family, and again, talk to Matt if you want to know about all the yucky stuff, because he'll tell you. He probably would love to tell you. <laughs> um, besides my family, I, I really have had people who have come and just sat with me. That there was a time, I just didn't want to talk to people, but people came and just sat there. 
We thought it was a little weird, but no, it wasn't weird, but they just sat there. They didn't have to pray scripture over me. They didn't have to say anything to me, but they sat there and they were with me. And Alan had mentioned something in the first service. We were connected. We, we need a connection to people really, really desperately. Um, people brought me coffee or took me out for coffee. Those are your people. Find them. <laughs> awesome. Um, they didn't let me live in guilt or shame or, you know, why am I not healed? Sometimes that can bring on um, shameful thoughts, like, did I do something wrong? Did this happen? This happened? Um, they spoke sense into me, I guess, because that's really senseless stuff. Um, but mostly just people loved me. And I think we're lacking that a lot in our, in our lives, in our world, because um, we're so busy. And, and not that we don't love people, but we don't take the time to spend with them. If people hadn't taken time to spend with me, um, taken time to pour into me, I honestly don't know where I'd be today. It, it's a fact, I, I can tell you. And, and with the help of Jesus, I absolutely number one. But if I didn't have those people pouring into me, I'm telling you, it would not have been good. Um, So my encouragement to you today is no matter what your what-ifs or your what-is are, you can get through them um, with the help of Jesus and and with other people's love. It might not be easy. God says it's not going to be easy. And if you don't have any people in your life, please see me. I would love, love, love to get you connected with people. I'll, I'll help you in any way because I really think that that is extremely important. So, um... Yeah, talk to me. Call me. Text me. I'm not the best texter, but <laughs> uh, but I can do it. Thanks, Kelly. Just take a look. Um, so the what ifs, the what ifs, the what is can be paralyzing. And most all of us at one point or another have been there, right? Or you know somebody who is. And um, I want to, I wanna, as we get ready to close, I want to do something. That now's the time if there's somebody by you that's sleeping or on their phone playing a game. Just say, grab it and throw it away. Or something. <laughs> um, but I, I want to take a moment and I want to shift dramatically because there's something we all need to hear. And if you aren't doing it, um, you need to. And that's this. You need to find something in this culture, in this day and age, as, as we're nearing the end, you need to find something to hold on to. Now, we know it's, it's Jesus, but I, I submit to you, you better have some verses and some truth and some promises that you're able to hold on to. Because the what ifs are here. And the what is is in front of you. And you better have something that's tangible truth that you can hold on to that will not let you go. Even if you think you're letting go, it won't let you go because it'll be so deep inside of you. I just want to share a couple of scriptures with you. And you can use them, you can grab a hold of them, you can make them your own, but I suggest you get something. Paul said to his Spiritual son Timothy in 2 Timothy 1 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity. He has not put it. When you are walking in fear, thinking about fear, letting fear paralyze you, it is not from God. What has God given you? Look what it says. But He has given you power, love, and self discipline. That's what He's given you. And when fear creeps in, and when fear's at your door, and when fear begins to knock, You can open the door to fear, but it's not going to end well. You better know how to fight it. You better know what he, that the Lord has given you, what God has given you. He has given you the power to say no. He's given you the power to stop it. He's given you the power to love. He's given you self-discipline in your mind to say, I'm not going to go there. That's what he's given you. Not the spirit of fear. Jesus, in in Matthew chapter 10, I I love this. Jesus asked a simple question. What is the price of two sparrows? Then he answered it. One copper coin, right? About that. He said, but not a single sparrow can fall 
to the ground without the Father knowing it. Not, not one single sparrow will fall. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered. He knows every one. He says, so, so don't be afraid. You're more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. And don't be concerned about what you eat. Don't be concerned about what you drink. Don't be concerned about those things. Don't worry about those things. Don't let them create fear in you. Those things are, are the things that dominate the thoughts of those who are unbelievers in this world. But your father already knows what you need. He says, then seek the kingdom above everything else. And when you do, he will give you everything you need. And I love this. He wraps it up. So don't be afraid. Twice in that just short little talk, Jesus was talking to his disciples. He said, so don't be afraid. For it gives your father great happiness to give you the kingdom. He was sharing, don't be afraid. If your dad knows the sparrow will fall, when it falls, you're much more valuable than that. He's got this. He's got this. And it can be seemingly overwhelming. It can be seemingly that all is out of control. We live in a broken, fallen world. But Jesus said, my father's got this. And he'll help you through it. I want to do something as we close. Would you stand to your feet? I, I want to ask some of the elders, some of the prayer team, if they'd come up. And you know, I, I want us to give us an opportunity because some of you are in the middle of the what ifs. Let's be honest. Or some of you are living the what is. And I want to give us just an opportunity for a few minutes if you need somebody to pray with you, to encourage you. Somebody just to, to say, I'm here for you. I'm here with you. I'm going to walk through this with you. As we kind of do this last course, there's some people here that, that love you and care for you, and they want to pray for you and pray with you. But you're going to need to step out. Don't walk through it by yourself. Don't be sitting there going like, man, I'm in, I am living the what ifs, and then not respond. Just let somebody pray with you and pray for you. Can we do that? I want to pray for you today. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your heart over us. Thank you that you've not left us and abandoned us. You've given us a way through. It doesn't mean the absence of issues. It doesn't mean the absence of pain. It doesn't mean the absence of problems. It just means in the middle of it, you are there. And you put out your hand. I love the scriptures that says, he'll take your hand. Would you put up your hand? Because he wants to take your hand. He wants to take your hand and walk through whatever you're walking through. Whatever you're in the middle of right now. Picture yourself reaching up and him putting his hand in yours and saying, come on, we're going to make it through this. I've got this. And it may not turn out the way you think. The marriage may not make it. The job may not be there. You can do all the what ifs, but you know what? In the middle of it, he's promised he'll be there for you. So in the brokenness and the fallenness of this world, don't let it overtake you. Don't let it overwhelm you. Don't let it cause fear. Let him be your strength. Let him be your source to walk through this. So I want you to do something. I want you to respond. I want you to come. Let somebody pray with you, pray for you, pray over you. Just let him encourage you today, the next few moments. So come on, let somebody pray with you.